Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Zavislin. I'm CAD manager here at NV5. And today we're going to be taking a look at AutoCAD 2013 and the new features in that program, as well as introduce you to some of the items on our latest workstation upgrade uh, that we are starting to deploy at this time. So it is, again, uh, that time of the cycle where we need to get some software updated and progress along to, to try to keep up with the rest of the industry here. What I'll be looking at today is I'm going to start off with just a little quick overview, uh, kind of a, a broad overview of the upgrade itself, and we'll talk a little bit then about Windows 7. And then the main things I'm going to introduce us to today is going to be the CAD data manager software, which is replacing the Cadillac program, and then the new features of AutoCAD 2013. In the coming weeks, we will then be looking at features of Civil 3D, and I will be sending out invites to those webinars as I get them scheduled. And I'll probably break that up into three or four different webinars based on specific functionality within Civil 3D. Uh, definitely a lot more enhancements on the Civil 3D side of things than what we're going to see in the AutoCAD uh, portion today. I'm going to start off with just a little poll here, and it's going to be a little tough because I think a lot of you are watching together in your conference room, uh, so you guys can kind of do a, a, a group answer here. Go ahead and throw the poll up here. So I've got some questions now, just kind of get an idea of what version of Civil 3D, and unfortunately if you're using LAN desktop, I put that item on there as well, but if you go ahead and select which version you are using currently, and we'll give you a few more seconds to figure that out. Got a couple of you left to vote. Probably about one more needs to vote. 100% voted. All right, so let me close the poll. And I will share that with you now. So we can see the results. And this is kind of what I was expecting to see, is most of us should be using Civil 3D 2011. Uh, that is our current standard application. Unfortunately, there's still a few of you languishing, struggling in the LAN desktop world from 2009. That's ancient in terms of software. Uh, so hopefully with this next release, we will get you fully migrated and moved up to Civil 3D. Um, we do have a few people in the company working in 2012 to meet some specific project needs. And then we also have a couple folks working in 2013. So I didn't expect to see too many there. All right. so. Glad to see uh, where we're at. So let me jump in here. So let's talk a little bit about overview now. All right. So again, we're going to take a look at the updated CAD Data Manager. Uh, moving forward, once the deployment is fully released to everybody in your office or your project teams, at that point, then, we will start mandating that Civil 3D 2013 will become the standard application for all new projects. For legacy projects and work that you're currently working on, maybe you've got some clients that are only working in 2012, uh, we still will make those versions available. And I did decide to leave LAN Desktop on here because we still have some legacy projects that we do occasionally need to be able to access and be able to edit an alignment in LAN Desktop or, or something like that. Um, really need to get everybody off of that. Our licensing states that we can only run the prior three versions. So we're deployed on 13. So technically, we should only be running back to version 10. Uh, Autodesk has been nice, and they're kind of looking the other way for those of us with still a few legacy seats of LAN desktop in 2009. So they are still making that uh, or providing us access to that as well. Uh, so we are seeing a kind of a hodgepodge of versions for Civil 3D, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in the Civil 3D webinars uh, in terms of making sure that you manage your data, uh, make sure you're working in the correct version. I have found moving forward that most of my data, most of my files translate very well going from Civil 3D 2011 
to working in Civil 3D 2013, what you end up having to do, or what I recommend you do, is that you go through and if you do want to upgrade, you open every file in 2013 and then save them in that format. All right, that way things like data references should work fine. Uh, the only thing I've had problems with moving forward with Civil 3D has been things like cross-sections. They change the way a little bit that cross-section groups are laid out. Uh, so what looked good in 2011, all your cross-section views may readjust and change uh, their orientation slightly. Uh, as you move forward to 2013. With all the basic stuff like alignments and profiles, uh, corridor models and surfaces, all of that seems to upgrade fairly well going from 2011 to 2013. Um, in addition to Civil 3D, uh, we are on this deployment making available all of the 2013 versions of the Autodesk products. So if you're using Navisworks or Revit or 3D Studio, uh, uh, 3ds Max, all of those are updated to the latest version, of, which is 2013. Uh, some of you are probably saying, well, didn't 14 just come out or 2014 version? Yes, uh, they came out uh, about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, at some point over the course of the next month, I will make some of those deployments available for people who have projects that are required to be done in 14. And I don't expect that there's going to be a whole lot of that initially, uh, but we will over the next six months or whatever uh, make that deployment available. Uh, in addition to the Autodesk uh, MicroStation products, we've updated all those to the latest V8i Select Series 3 where those are available, and that includes both MicroStation, inroads, and then all of the various Haystead applications, whether it's WaterCAD, SewerCAD, or StormCAD. Uh, we've also updated Esri, the ArcGIS desktop application, to the latest version, which is 10.1. Let me jump around a little bit here. Let me find my Internet Explorer here. And I just want to point out the the class I'm doing today is based on a handout I've put together. Uh, it's kind of a work in progress, so there's a, a few gaps in it still. Uh, but if you go to the CAD support page and search on 2013 upgrade, uh, there'll be this document here, the CAD Workstation 2013 upgrade. I'm going to start on the Overview tab. And this is really the portion where I'm at in the presentation here, talking about what applications uh, are on the build. So you can see for 2011, we did uh, uh, provide these applications uh, on here. And, yeah, Civil 3D. God, I can't read. Uh, so for Civil 3D, then we have all the profiles that were developed where they were available for that. Uh, 2012, we only have just the stock configuration because we kind of skipped over that version. And then 2013, uh, you'll see, for example, not all of the Haystead products yet uh, will work in 2013. There, you see there's no water cat or water gems. Uh, those releases are not yet available. So hopefully in the, in the next few months, uh, Bentley will get those out. Uh, and then we also have the LAN Desktop Companion. Here's all the additional Autodesk products. Uh, here's the versions for the Bentley products, right, MicroStation inroads, and then all the other applications that, that we put on the typical build. Just make you aware of that. Um, as we work through today, we're going to go through this section here on the AutoCAD 2013 uh, on those updates. So uh, let me jump back into my PowerPoint here. All right. Uh, the Windows uh, platform that we're deploying this on is the 64-bit version only. We're just finding that so much of the software now requires more than the 3 or 4 gig of RAM available in the 32-bit world that it really just makes sense to try to get everybody updated to 64-bit. And we are finding in a couple instances, uh, especially locally here in Sacramento with our structures group, where we've got some old DOS-based applications that do not work on that. Uh, interim fix for that is we are making available some 32-bit workstations that they can remote access uh, to get to some of these applications until we can find 64-bit uh, alternatives. main reason we're going 64-bit is so we can put at least 8 gigabytes of RAM in every workstation. And then we also uh, need to update some of the hard drives. Right now, the image 
itself requires 250 gigabytes worth of hard drive space, but then you also need swap file and a few other uh, room to grow on there. Uh, because of these requirements, not every computer in the company will meet these standards. Uh, so IT is in the process in the offices that we are going to be adding RAM in larger hard drives. And because of that, the deployment process may take a little bit longer in some offices than others. Some offices have been real, uh, real good about keeping their workstations current over the past few years, uh, that most of them will go to 64-bit uh, without any problems. So kind of, you know, be patient with the folks in the IT group. Uh, as they work through and uh, get these these updated for you. Okay, because it is taking a bit of time, do be aware that if you're working on a project, don't start working on 13 if everybody on the project does not have the new build yet. So you kind of have to, to communicate with each other and make sure uh, before you do start working in 13 on projects that everybody has access to that data. All right. 